Hi, I'm Trisha Ward from the heart.org Medscape Cardiology. I'm joined today by Dr. Matthew Budoff. He is Professor of Medicine at UCLA and the Endowed Chair of Preventive Cardiology at the Lundquist Institute. Welcome, Dr. Budoff. Thank you. So the reason I wanted to talk to you today is because there's been some recent studies linking calcium supplements to an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. And uh, I'm old enough to remember when we used to tell people that dietary calcium and coronary calcium weren't connected and weren't the same. Were we wrong saying that? So, you know, I think there's a lot of mixed data out there still. Um, the U.S. Preventive Task Force has looked into this a number of years ago and said there's no association between calcium supplementation and um, increased risk of cardiovascular disease. But as you mentioned, there's a couple of newer studies that point us towards a, a relationship. So I think that we still have a little bit of a mixed bag, but I think we need to dive a little deeper into that to figure out what's going on. And does it appear to be connected to calcium in the form of supplements versus calcium from foods? Yeah, we looked very carefully at dietary calcium in the MESA study, the multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, and there is no relationship between dietary calcium intake and uh, coronary calcium or cardiovascular events. So we're talking mostly about supplements now when we talk about this increased risk that we're seeing. And because it's seen with, uh, with supplements, is that likely because that's a much higher concentration of calcium coming in? Or do you think it's something inherent in it being in a, the form of a supplement or something? I think there's two things. I think one, it's definitely a higher concentration all at once. You get much more milligrams at a time when you take a supplement than even if you had a high calcium food or drink. Uh, you also, though, most supplements have vitamin D as well. And I think vitamin D and calcium work synergistically. And when you give them both together simultaneously, I think that may have a more of a potentiating effect that might exacerbate any potential risk. And is there any reason to think there might be a difference between type of calcium supplement? I always think of the chalky tablet form versus, you know, sometimes there's chews. Or... Yeah, you know, I'm not, I'm not aware of, of the difference in, in the supplement type themselves, but I, I think the Vitamin D issue is a big problem because I, we all have patients that take thousands of units of vitamin D and, and just crazy numbers and people advocate really high numbers and that stays in the system. Personally, I think part of the explanation is very high levels of vitamin D on top of calcium supplementation. You now absorb it better. You now get it into the into the into uh, both the bone, but maybe also into the coronary arteries if you're both very high in vitamin D and then taking a large calcium supplement. So it might be the calcium vitamin D combo that's giving us some trouble. And I think people on vitamin D supplements really need to watch their levels and not get super therapeutic. With the vitamin D? With the vitamin D. Okay. And then in some of the studies, there seemed to be a higher risk in patients with diabetes. Is there any reason why that would be? Or? I can't think of a reason exactly why diabetes per se, except for renal disease. And patients with diabetes have more intrinsic renal disease, proteinuria, and, and even a reduced EGFR. And what we've seen is the kidney is very strongly tied to this. So we have a very strong relationship. Work I've done a decade ago now showing that calcium supplementation in patients on dialysis or with advanced renal disease have much higher coronary calcium progression. We did prospective randomized trials showing that calcium supplements lead to, well, not supplements, but calcium to reduce phosphorus, but calcium intake in the form of pills led to more coronary calcium. Now, we always thought that was just relegated to the renal population, and there might be an overlap here with the diabetes and more renal disease. So I have a feeling it has to it has to do with more of that. It might be regulation of a parathyroid hormone as well, which might be more abnormal in patients with diabetes. Okay. So what are you telling your patients? So patients with normal kidney function, I tell them that the bone will modulate 99.9% .9 of the calcium uptake. And if they have osteopenia or osteoporosis, regardless of their calcium score, I'm very comfortable putting them on supplements. I'm a little more cautious with the vitamin D levels and I keep an eye on that and I regulate how much vitamin D they get based on their levels. I get them into the normal range, but I don't want them super therapeutic. Um, and you can even follow their calcium score. Again, we've shown that 
if you're taking too much calcium, there your calcium score will go up a lot. So I can just check it again in a couple of years and just make sure that it's safe. And in terms of um, vit vitamin D levels, when you're seeing super therapeutic, what sort of levels do you consider a safe amount to take? I'd like safe? them under 100 as far as their, their upper level. Uh, normal is around 70 in most labs. So I try to keep them in the, in the normal range. And I don't even want them high normal if I'm going to be concomitantly giving them calcium supplements. And of course, if they have renal insufficiency, then I'm much more cautious in, in how much calcium. We've even seen calcium supplements raise the serum calcium, which you never see with dietary calcium. So that's another potential proof that it might be too much too fast. So for renal patients, even mild renal insufficiency, maybe even in diabetes where we've seen a signal, maybe aim lower in the amount of calcium supplementation if diet is insufficient and aim a little lower in vitamin D targets. And I think you'll be in a safer place. Is there anything else you want to add about? The evidence is still evolving. I'd say that it's, it's interesting and, and a little frustrating maybe that we don't have a final, final answer on all of this, but I would keep, keep tuned for more data because we're looking at a lot of the epidemiological studies to try to see what the what happens in the real world with with these both dietary intake of calcium and calcium supplementation well thank you very much for joining me today oh it's a pleasure thanks for having me this is trisha ward signing off for medscape thanks